Good. My name is Karen Rubino. I have been the theater teacher this week for the Carter Act Performing Arts Camp. I hope you all um, enjoyed it, and it was my pleasure to teach these students. Just a little housekeeping before we begin. I would ask you to silence all cell phones, um, but you can certainly take pictures and video. Just make sure the flash is off. So tonight is an informal showcase just to share a little bit of what I've been doing all week. We started out the week with the Foundations of Acting, which is improv. We worked uh, some camera acting, so commercial work. We did monologues and scenes, and that's what we're gonna present for you this evening. We're gonna present monologues and scenes that we worked on for this week. Some things are memorized, some things are not, um, but I'm really, really proud of the work that they put in, so this is a little thing to show you, to take part. Um, a few thanks before we also begin. I wanna thank Brian Chen and the Central Jersey Arts Council. I want to thank Diana St. John um, and the whole team here at the Carter Performing Arts Center. I want to thank the awesome crew, Corinne and Mark, who are doing lights and sound for us. And these wonderful students, they really put in the hard work. Um, I'm very, very proud of what they've done. And for you, the parents, because you have supported arts education, which is my true passion. And without further ado, here are the students in the very first Carter Act Performing Arts Camp Showcase. Excuse me, are you lost? That's exactly what I was gonna ask. You shouldn't be here right now. But these are my woods. I don't care who these are. It's not safe for you to be here. You're not old enough to boss me. Believe me, I am. Oh really, how old are you? Let's just say I'm 17. Oh, that is old. You have no idea. Uh, where do you think you're going? Uh, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna get a drink from that thing what you did. Oh no, you saw me drink? Look, you need to leave right now. But it's just water. No, no, listen. When little girls drink from that spring, they turn into toads. Nice try. I happen to know that toad. In fact, he's my toad. Huh. Well, now that you say it, I do see the resemblance. You're very odd. Jesse Tuck, how do you? Winnie Foster. I, I just ran away from home. And how's that going? So far, it's just a bunch of trees. Just a bunch of trees? You own these woods, Woody Foster, and you don't even know what you got? Come with me. Where are we going? Up. Up right now? There's no use of running away if you don't make an adventure. Good point. I just hope you're not afraid of heights. Only one way to find out. A monologue called Haunts. Oh, Anna, if there was someone out there who loved you. As 13th in line in my own kingdom, I didn't stand a chance. I knew I had to marry into the throne somewhere. As heir, Elsa was preferable, but no one was getting anywhere with her but you. You were so desperate for love, you were going to marry me just like that. I figured after we were married, I would have staged a little accident for Elsa. But then she doomed herself and you went after her. Now she's, now she's disappeared in a palace dungeon. All there's left to do is kill Elsa and bring back Summer. You, you're no match for Elsa. I, on the hand, on the other hand, is a hero and is going to save Arendelle for destruction. I will be doing a monologue. Alexa, Alexa is always listening. But you want to hear something even more strange? My computer has been speaking to me. No, I'm serious. Yes, that computer right over there. At first, when I was in bed and looking at my phone, at first it was like, just saying things like, turn off your music or turn off your light. But then it started getting even more complex. It started asking me to do favors for it. Like, it told me to buy this new computer game and have it shipped to the house. Of course I didn't do it, because it's a computer. What's it gonna do to me? Well, the next day, when I came to my room, my room was a complete mess. After
after that. <laughs> Sorry. What's going to tell me? Well, the next day my room was a complete mess and something smelled like a dye in here. I messed, that's the last time I messed with my supernatural computer. The next day when the computer asked me to order it food, I didn't question it and ordered it, the food right away. I ordered it from my house, but it never arrived. The doorbell never rang and my app told me it arrived. I don't know where it went. Maybe the app and the computer are working together. Wait, did you hear that? Shh. You heard that, right? See, I'm not crazy. It just asked me to write a three page paper about the Civil War. Wait a minute. My little brother is supposed to write an essay about the Civil War. Oh, he is so dead. Jackson! This is Hong. Hello, Ducky. Who are you? I'm your friend. No, you're not. I don't have any friends. I'm, everyone hates me because I'm ugly. Oh, they're too, too, too cool. I think you look delicious. What did you say? Uh, I said poultry can be so malicious. Uh, look at them guzzling all that bread. It's supposed to be really nice. It's French. Mmm, that orange. Do you mean to say that they didn't let you have any? Not a crumb. Well, that settles it. Lunch is on me. Really? You really are a friend. Yeah, of course I am. Now just follow me. I should tell my mom. Oh no, you mustn't. I really think I should. Listen, we won't be gone for long. And what harm can they do? And you're hungry, aren't you? I guess, yeah. Well, that makes two of us. If you're so sure. I'm quite sure. Uh, this is the monologue of the Princess Diaries. Uh, uh it stopped raining. I'm really no good at speech making. Normally I get so nervous that I faint or run away or sometimes I even get sick. Um, but you didn't need to know, to know that. Um, I'm not giving, I'm not so afraid anymore. See, my father helped me earlier this evening. I had every intention of giving up my claim to the throne and my mother helped me by telling me it was okay and by supporting me like she has my entire life. But then I wondered, how, how would I feel after abdicating my role of Princess of Genovia? Would I feel relieved or will I feel sad? And then I realized how many stupid times a day I use the word I, and all I ever do is think about myself and how lame it is that there's like seven billion people, other people all on this planet. And, sorry, I'm going too fast. But then I thought, if I cared about the other seven billion people out there instead of just me, that's a, probably a better use of my time. Times. You say it when you bump into me, when you don't hold the door open, when you realize I've been standing right next to you. You say it all the time. I've never heard anyone say sorry more than you have. It's almost like you're always doing something that needs apologizing for. My dad used to apologize a lot. He'd come home from work late with an apology. He'd, he'd leave early with an apology. He'd miss my game and apologize later. My dad was always apologizing until one day he left and he didn't come back. I never got an apology for that. Apologies have meant nothing to me ever since he left. You can be deeply, sincerely, insanely sorry for the smallest thing and I wouldn't believe you. My mom told me one day this would all go away and I'll be able to look at everyone with a smile again. That was five years ago and I still can't accept anyone's apology. My mom has apologized for my dad leaving hundreds of times and I'll never accept my mother's apologies or my friends or strangers just bump into me on the side of the street. My mom and I are doing great, just me and her. And a part of me is glad my father left. I'm happy he left us. He could come back with the grandest apology anyone has ever heard. And I still wouldn't believe him. You remind me a lot of my father. And it's been in the back of my mind ever since you first apologized to me. I can't have another person like my father in my life. So no, I don't accept your apology. I never will.
A scene from Matilda. Matilda. Watch. Matilda, I really think it would be wise. Please. I moved it with my eyes. Am I strange? I think, I think. How do you fancy a nice cup of tea? What do you think it is? This thing with my eyes. Well, I'm not gonna pretend I know what it is, Matilda. But I don't believe it's something you should be frightened of. I think it's something to do with that incredible mind of yours. You mean there's no room in my head for all my brain, so they have to squish it out through my eyes? Well, not exactly, but uh, something like that. You certainly are a special girl, Matilda. I, I met your mother. She's unusual. What about your father? Is he, is he proud to have a daughter as clever as you? Oh, yeah, he's very proud. He's very, very, very proud. He's always saying, Matilda, I'm so proud to have a daughter as, that's not true. Miss Honey, that's not what he says. He's not proud at all. He calls me a liar, a cheat, and a nasty little creep. I see you. Here we are, home sweet home. Are you poor? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Very. Don't they pay the teachers very well? No, they don't, actually. But uh, I'm even poorer than most because of uh, other reasons. You see, I, I used to live with my aunt. But one day, I was out walking, and I, I came across this old shed. I fell completely in love with it. I ran to the farmer and begged him to let me move in. He thought I was mad, but he agreed, and I've lived here ever since. But Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. You see, my father died when I was young. Magnus was his name. He was very kind, but uh, when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian. She was mean and cruel and horrible like you can hardly imagine. And when I got my job as a teacher, she suddenly presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. She had written everything down, every tea bag, every electricity bill, every tin of beans. And she made me sign a contract to pay her back every penny. She, she even produced a document to say that my father had given her his entire house. Did he really do that? Magnus, did he really just give her his house? I don't know, but I find it hard to believe. Just like I cannot believe that he would have that he would have killed himself, which is what she said happened. You think, you think she did him in, don't you, Miss Honey? I cannot say. All I know is that years of being bullied by that woman made me pathetic. I was trapped. And that's why you live here. But Miss Honey, she's got your father's house. She's got everything that's yours. Let's go. She did him in. Let's go to the police. No, no, we can't. We have no evidence. We could just tell them. Tell them that she did it. It won't work, Matilda. It would be my word against hers. They never believed she was capable of murder. But why? She was so cruel to you. She, she shouted at you. She beat you. She locked you in tiny cupboards and threw you into cellars. Stop, Matilda. Please. Miss Honey, your aunt's a murderer. She killed Magnus, Miss, Miss Trenchville. <laughs> this is a monologue about Maleficent. Oh, come on now, Prince Philip. Why so melancholy? A wondrous future lies before you. You, the destined hero of a charming fairy tale come true. Behold, King Stephen's castle. In yonder, a topmost tower, dreaming of her true love, the Princess Aurora. But see, the gracious whim of fate, why this the self-same peasant maid who won the heart of our noble prince but yesterday. She is indeed most wondrous fair, 
gold of sunshine in her hair, lips that shame the red, red rose. Why, indeed, in an ageless sleep she finds repose. The years roll by, but a hundred years to a steadfast heart are about a day. And now the gates of the dungeon part, and the prince is free to go his way. Off he rides on his noble steed, a violent figure, straight and tall, to wake his love with love's first kiss, and to prove that love conquers all. <laughs> now, come, my pet, let us leave our noble prince with these happy thoughts, a most gratifying day. A monologue. Last night, my world shattered. I realized that my younger brother, Colin, is taller than me. He was like, ha, 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 I'm taller than you, little hobbit. Shut up, Colin. No one understands the daily struggles of being short. People use your head as an armrest, like, all the time. I'm not an armrest. I'm a human being. People also assume you're, like, five or six years younger than you are. When I wanted to ride the Ferris wheel, they asked if I wanted the 12 and under ticket. 12 and under? I'm 16. People always feel the need to point out how short you are. Like, wow, you're like three feet tall. No, I'm five foot one quarter, idiot. And then they're like, oh, you can just wear high heels, which is great advice because I love wearing shoes that make my feet feel like they're on fire. People also taunt you by holding things above your head and putting them on a high shelf. I really want to strangle each and every tall person, but to do so, I would need a stepladder. This is a Cinderella act.
A scene from Peter Pan. Boy, why are you crying? What's your name? Wendy Mora Angela Darling. What is your question? Peter Pan. Is that all? Yes. I'm so sorry. It doesn't matter. What's your address? Second to the right and straight on till morning. What a funny address. No, it isn't. Oh, but that's where you get the letters. I don't get letters. But your mother gets letters. I don't have a mother. Peter, you mustn't touch me. Why? No one must ever touch me. <sighs> no wonder you were crying. I wasn't crying. I never cry. My shadow isn't sticking on. It's come off? How awful! <sighs> Peter, you've been trying to stick it on with soap. Well then... It must be sewn on. What is sewn? You are dreadfully ignorant. No, I'm not. <sighs> I'll sew it on for you. But we must have more light. Sit there. I dare say it will hurt a little. I never cry. It's not quite self yet. Perhaps I should have ironed it. <laughs> Wendy, look, look at the cleverness of me. You conceit. Of course I did nothing. You did a little. A little? If I am of no use, I can at least withdraw. Wendy, don't withdraw. I can't help myself when crowing when I am pleased with myself. Wendy, one boy is worth more than 20 girls. Do you really think so, Peter? Yes, I do. Cruella. Well, just be sure the puppies don't do it again. I don't want the yowls and growls of spotted little furry creatures. Oh, spotted little furry creatures. Why? I don't think I've quite seen anything like them. Look at the depth. Look at the patterns. Why? They're practically works of art. And just when I need to complete my collection. You know what? I've changed my mind. I've been without a pet long enough. No one to play with. I can't wait to wear, I mean, care for all the little puppies. I'll buy the whole litter. How much? news you ever heard about Miss Churchill and Mrs. Fairfax? Had you any idea of it? Can you imagine if I knew and I was encouraging you to give way to your own feelings, had I known I would have cautioned you. Cautioned me? Why? You don't think I care about Frank Churchill. Well, what do you mean? You said you loved the man. I hoped I had developed better taste than to choose Frank Churchill over him. Frank Churchill? Furthermore, I would never even have dreamed of him, except that he told me he was wonderful. Yes but I thought you might. That's raising my thoughts to him would be a sign of very good taste. Those were your words. Yes, but I meant them in too. to. And without having heard them, I would never dare to hope. Harriet, please, before we can go on, there's something that I must clarify. Is it possible that you're speaking of Mr. Knightley? To be sure. But you spoke of the services that Frank had rendered in rescuing you from the gypsies. Oh, I never said that. I remember it with perfect clarity. If I spoke of being rescued, I was thinking of Mr. Knightley asking me to the dance after Mr. Elton snuffed me. That was when I knew how superior a man he was. Good God, what a horrible mistake. What is it to be done? Must something to be done about it? You must thank him 500 million times more above me than Miss Churchill, yet you did say. Harriet, have you any idea of Mr. Knightley returning your affection? Yes, I might say that I have. 
You told me to let his behavior to be the rule of men, and so I have. Am I wrong to hope as I do? Harriet, I can only venture to declare that Mr. Knightley is the last man on earth who would intentionally give any woman the idea of feeling more for her than he actually does. This is a monologue. Karen, listen to me. I know this sounds crazy, but I think Max is trying to kill me. Yes, my cat. Can I stay here for a couple days while I figure out what to do? It's not funny. I'm not kidding. Okay? You don't believe me? The other night, he was waiting for me at the top of the stairs. He tried to jump on me when I got to the top, but I got out the way. Barely. He was trying to kill me. I swear. He's always hiding in piles of things and jumping at me. Look at all these scratches. No, I don't know why. I feed him every day, I give him treats, and lots of attention, everything. Maybe I let him watch too much TV. I woke up the other night with the feeling of being watched. Now, Max is always in the living room at night, but I saw two glowing eyes at the bottom of the bed near my feet. It was Max. He was watching me while I slept. Okay, that doesn't sound bad, but my door is closed at night. He opened it. My door has a dog instead of handle. How did he do that? He's a cat. Wait, Max heard me talking on the phone before I came here. He knows I'm here. Did you lock the door? This is a monologue from Finding Nemo. No, no, you can't, stop, please. Please don't go away, please. No one's ever stuck with me for so long before. And if you leave, if you leave, I just, I remember things better with you. I do. Look, P. Sherman, 42, um, 42, I remember it. I do, it's there, I know it is, because when I look at you, I can feel it. And I look at you, and I'm home. Please, I don't want that to go away. I don't want to forget. This is a scene of Anne in Green Gables. You're going to be late for church. Ice cream. I've never had ice cream before. You will at the picnic. It's near the pond where I live. Oh, yes. The Lake of Shining Waters. The Lake of Shining Waters? I like to give fancy names to things. You must be Diana Berry. I am. Marilla says you are pretty, but I think you're beautiful. Oh. You are, honestly. Oh, my name is Anne Shirley, spelled with an E. I'd rather be called Cordelia, but Marilla says that that would just confuse everyone. I'm pleased to meet you, Anne. Oh, oh. Likewise. I'm sure. We live near each other. I'm at the Green Gables. I know. It will be nice to have someone to play with. No other girls live near me. And my sister, Minnie Mae, is too little. Then it's settled. What's settled? We can be best friends. I suppose so. Will you swear to be my best friend forever and ever? It's dreadfully wicked to swear, especially in a church. Not my kind of swearing. It just means promising solemnly. That's OK, then. How do you do it? We raise hands. I'll say the oath first. I solemnly swear to be faithful to my best friend, Diana Berry, as long as the sun and moon shall endure. Now you repeat it and put my name in. I solemnly swear to be faithful to my best friend, Anne Shirley, as long as the sun and moon shall endure. <laughs> I heard that you were a strange girl, Anne Shirley, but I think I'm going to like you real well. I have something I need to say to you. Vote for me. 
not for president. I don't even think I'm old enough for that, for the school council, I mean. I want to be your class president because prom skank last year, and I think you all know I'll throw a killer party. A vote for me is a vote for a better prom. Also, the guidance counselor, Miss Hillard, said that if I want to get into a college, I'm gonna need extracurriculars, like student council. So here I am. Apparently, my GPA is record breaking, which I think is a good thing, but apparently not enough to get into a college of my choice. Without the curriculars, you know, but yeah, so vote for me. I'm supposed to tell you why I would be a good fit for the job, but let's be honest, you're going to vote for me anyway. Why? Because I'm popular and I'm running unopposed. But just to fill the time, I guess I'll go ahead and tell you another reason why I'm eligible. I babysat a lot last summer and I feel like I was a really good leader. I got the kids to go to bed only a couple hours after their bedtime, and I supervised when they cooked my dinner. So yeah, and also it's true that I ran for school council last year, but there was a miscommunication. Apparently, you can't just run to be student council. You have to run for a certain position. So I guess you could say, I'm ambitious. Oh well, time's up. So remember, vote for me for president of student council, not the government, obviously. This is a monologue about a 911 operator. The police are on their way. Stay calm and breathe. You're gonna be fine. I'll stay on the line with you until the police get to your house. Are you okay? Hello? He oh, they just hung up. What do I do when they just hang up? Oh, 911, what is your emergency? Can you, can you repeat that slower, sir? Do you have any idea where you're located? The mall? No, sir, crops are not a 911 emergency. However, I do appreciate your concern because they are truly are a one real fashion crime. Okay, bye. 911, what is your emergency? Mom, stop it. Mom, you can't call me at work anymore. Yes, school was fine. I'll call you when I get home. Love you too. Bye bye. 911, what is your emergency? Again? This woman with the Crocs thing is getting old and I have to work tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I thought you called before. Never mind, it's a long story. Please continue describing. You said someone stole your Crocs? Where are you? Okay, that's funny. The mall? Crocs? Really? Do you really want those back? Those Crocs? Like the ugliest shoes on the planet? Why don't you just call the police then? Uh, oh. Thank you again. Yeah.